the all new AI Augmented Sky. In the new update of Luminar 4.2, there is a couple of new features being added, tweaks been added as well, but the one I'm going to spend some time today and talk about and show you examples of is the new AI Augmented Sky. This, as an image compositor, saves masking. I'm really glad they added this to the software. As you'll see the examples, I'm going to turn this image here into this image in a relatively short space of time without any masking whatsoever. And the fact that the masking has been removed is a really good thing. It's a real time saver. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll see that sometimes the masking can take some time. But with this new AI Augmented Sky added, it saves time and you get images that you wouldn't expect. It just lets your creativity flow in a very, very short space of time. So without further ado, We'll dive right into this one. Okay, now that we're in Luminar, what I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you the new AI Augmented Sky. And it can be found in the Creative Tools, and it's here, and you have Amount, which is the opacity of it, the amount of the effect that's coming in, the warmth, which is the colour, warm or cool, relight, which will relight the object in the scene, and advanced settings. And with this, you can place any object in. I could go for the Aurora, and it'll place the Aurora there, and then I could go place object, and move it up to where I want. And with the handles, what you can actually do with the handles, is you can take them down so that it takes it down in size, scales it down in size, or brings it back up. And you'll see that in, within the library, there is many different things in here. Moons, mountains, I could put the mountains in, mountains in, and they could be there, move them up, put them into the background, take the opacity of them right down, and then to get them blended in, I could take the brush tool, and choose erase in this case, just erase away what I don't want to see. So you can see how you can build up images using this. This is a great tool for creating composite images and adding to your own images. But for us, what we are going to do is I'm going to reset that and I'm going to build up an image using images that, uh, the main image is the one that I've created, but the rest of it are using the images in here. And I'll show you step by step because when you're doing this, you add an AI augmented sky. And if you want to go further and further and deeper into your image to add more, you have to create a new stamped layer. So that's what I'm going to do for this. So I'll start off in here and I'll go object selection. And we will look at planet one or moon one. Let's go for moon one. Moon one actually works nice with this one. So I'm going to go place object and I'm going to take it right to the top of this and we'll leave that there and I'll check place object again so now already we have the moon that there on its own could be a finished image but we're going to take it even further and further so each time I do this so that I can add more and more elements in using the new AI augmented sky I am going to stamp a layer so what I'll do next is I am going to create new stamped layer and we'll let that merge together. Okay, that's the layers merged together. So next thing, I am going to, on the stamped layer that we've just created, object selection, and let's see what clouds are there. We've got enough atmosphere going on down here, but let's add a little more depth, just to show you that you can build up your images. I am quite like that one. I'm going to take that back a bit. That's looking okay, but it's looking quite sharp. And this is when the defocus comes in. So I could knock this right out of focus like that, which ruins the look of the image. Or I could bring it in just ever so slightly, just to about there. Maybe about there. Place object, I'm going to scale it up just some more and move it around. So we have about there. Click place object, I'm going to pull the opacity back, 
and I'm going to keep pulling the opacity back until I'm quite happy with the image and for this that'll do again create stamped layer as per usual I'm rendering another video in the background so this stamped layer here I am going to delete just to say free up some RAM for my computer so we now have this and in this stamped layer you can see we have added the moon and the clouds through here the next thing we're going to add is a new object and this object is one of my own creation for this image and I'll open that now and there we have it this I am going to, so that it fits in with the atmosphere that's happening, I'm going to turn the opacity down just ever so slightly. Mask refinement I'm going to leave at the moment because mask refinement I'll cover in another video. So I'm going to leave that for the moment. I can scale this. Which will take it to around there. I like the fact that it breaks the moon here though. So... I'm going to take that into the centre and scale it back up to around there. I am also going to take the opacity or the amount back up. I keep calling that opacity but it's, it's the amount of the blend. So if I take it to there I can send it right into the background and the background elements come through. Take it up to about there and I'm quite happy with that. So you can see so far, very, very quickly, we've created one background layer. We've then put the moon into the image. We've then put the clouds into the image. And then we've put this image of my own creation into it. So that's four in a relatively short time. No masking involved. Next, I am going to create a new stamped layer. And let all these merge together. And yet again, as I say, because I'm rendering a video in the background, I'm going to get rid of the stamped layer that's below that, so delete layer, so that I'm only working with the two. So here we are now with this. Last element with this stamped layer is some birds. So we have these birds here, and the first thing I'm going to do is place the object. So I'm going to scale that right down in size, and I'm going to place the birds around there. Just so that again they're breaking the moon here. I'm going to take them down in size again, just to try and help with scale. To around there. And I'm also, so that they fit in with the image. So as you can see, they're very, very strong there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge them into the atmosphere using the amount. Which will soften them. To around about there. And that says, with that again, very, very quickly, we have created this image without masking. Last but not least, we are going to add a new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, I'm going to go to looks. And I'm going to add one of my favourite looks to this, which is Camden. And that's the image complete. Hopefully you saw how easy it was just to create an entirely different image in a very short space of time using the new AI augmented sky. The images that you can create is only down to your imagination. The software does it for you to a point. I'm not going to say the software does it all, but the software does it to a point for you. And the imagination that you have is what you can let loose in the software. As you saw, this took a relatively short space of time to do that compared to the other videos. But it also allows the creation of new elements within your images. You could simply add one from the library, which I am sure they will be updating in the near future. Or you could create images yourself. And in future video, I'll show you how to create some of these. Uh, with this though... I'm really, really happy that they've done that. This is a good thing for the software because it allows your creativity to flow and you can create images and add objects into images, create new worlds. This is the good thing with this. And as I say, I'm really happy they've added uh, this to the software because it's something that if I can't get out shooting at all, I'll sit and do my landscape edits or my image compositing. And this for me is 
a great addition, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so, as I say, hopefully you got something from that. Future videos, I'll look at the other updates within the software as well. But for now, hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully you'll think about getting your hands in the software if you don't already have it. So if you're not currently updated to 4.2, just go into your software and check for new updates and download the new 4.2 update and then let your creativity flow. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out some more, please check them out in the channel below. If you're currently not a subscriber and consider subscribing, that would be absolutely fantastic. Until the next video, thanks again for watching.